everyone, a big welcome to another video and walking tour. Our explore today is back in the southeast of England and near the village town of Ainsford. We've got some interesting sightsees over the next two videos here in Ainsford, but the first one being at Lullingstone Roman Villa. It was in 1939 and on the eve of World War II when an exciting discovery was made in the low-lying fields besides the river, just south of Ainsford, that the remains of an extensive Roman villa were found. But it was not until after the war that a proper archaeological excavation revealed just how important the discovery really was. As investigators dug away the earth of centuries, they uncovered the remains of a large villa with lovely mosaic floors depicting ancient myths. The mosaic at Lullingstone is amongst the finest ever found in England and is virtually complete and unaltered by time. The first building for which they had evidence for was constructed by the first century and perhaps as early as AD 80. More findings of the soil horizons suggest that they may have even been earlier occupation on the site. The northern wing was built over a cellar, or a deep room, which may have been used simply for storage, but judging by the number of access routes from within the house and outside, it may have been from its inception a cult room, as it is known to be from the later 2nd century. Roman temples were often one of the most important buildings in Roman culture, so many homes would have built one at their property, and this was the case at Lullingstone. The cult room would have been the main room of the temple, and where the image of the god who the temple was dedicated to would have been placed or painted here. A house church was then built on top of the cult room, and it was the discovery of this church which made Lullingstone so special as it's very rare to find that in England. On these walls there are evidence of the Cairo monogram, which is a very early Christian symbol and the only known surviving painting from the era of 150 AD. This showed a set of wall paintings that were interpreted as showing Christians at prayer. The cult house has a niche in one wall with a painting of three water nymphs, so it was quite likely that the chamber was associated with a water cult. So what of the people who may have lived here? Well, although we already know that Lullingstone was a home to those in the upper ranks of Roman society, we unfortunately cannot be certain of who they were. But two Roman busts, which are on show here, could give an insight into those who call here home. Other mysteries include the two skeletons that were uncovered and found buried in the mausoleum. One male and one female both in their 20s. Unfortunately, grave robbers ransacked the female's tomb and only fragments of her skeleton remain. Yet the male skeleton was preserved in much better condition, but there was no obvious cause of death. All there is left to do is speculate whether these were actually residents of the villa. In the second half of the second century, possibly around AD 150, the simple winged corridor house was substantially enlarged. Such development would indicate increasing prosperity on the part of the owners. To the south, a bath suite was built onto the villa house, separated from it by a corridor with external doorways at its western end suggesting perhaps that the bath suite was used by people other than the immediate family of the owner. 
and the position of the bath suite may have determined by the site of an earlier bathhouse or bath suite if there was one and also by the presence of the water supply represented by a well to the south. Additional rooms were built on the northern side of the villa house. In the later 3rd century, the northern range was demolished and replaced with a narrower range of five rooms, three of which incorporated an underfloor heating system. The bath suite was modified, the main change being the provision of a larger, cold plunge bath besides the original one. The latter may now have been used as a system to store water for the villa. This change may in part reflect wider modifications to the villa's water supply. The villa also had two external buildings, one being a granary and the other the temple. The granary was one of the largest known from a site like this in Roman Britain and it was provided with underfloor vents to help prevent the grain from spoiling. I think the best and most interesting part of this building is to see the central core of the house where the mosaic lays. This is the dining room with its attached audience chamber, which again demonstrated the increasing prosperity of the villa. The main mosaic panel tells the story of Bellerophon, the Prince of Corinth and mythical hero, who performed miracles on the winged horse Pegasus, who killed Chimera, which was a fire-breathing she-monster. The scene is surrounded by Latin and translates roughly to Jupiter's adoption of the Princess Europa. Many of the grave goods were also found from the temple that are here in the villa that are showcased. Bowls and glass bottles, silver spoons and 30 glass gaming counters that stand on the remains of a gaming board, as well as plenty of pieces of pottery. What we enjoyed about visiting here is not so much about the history surrounding their military sites, even though they are interesting, but more so how the Romans lived, 
how they got on with their everyday life and worked and lived and grew up with their families. It was really interesting to learn about their heritage and religion and of course see the beautiful family home with the famous mosaics that dominate the entire centre of the villa. There are so many different and unusual things to spot, including the many Roman objects that were found during excavations. There's a huge amount to read and interact with, or simply just wonder. It's such a great visit and it's very relaxing. We liked our time here at Lullingstone and want to encourage you to visit if you're in the area. So if you've enjoyed walking with us today, please be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. A huge shout out to our newest Patreon, Matthew Williams. Thank you for your support. And as always, till next time. <laughs>